Tonight, Amazon announces a new batch of tablets and e-readers. Larry Ellison is stepping down as Oracle CEO. And those Microsoft cuts have come to fruition. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 175 for Thursday, September 18th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like Dutch Cocoa Sun Crunch. To get your free NatureBox sampler, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Following some web leaks yesterday, Amazon officially announced two new e-readers, the Kindle Voyage, a six-inch e-reader with a lighted e-ink screen and pressure-sensitive sensors that let you squeeze to turn pages, and also a lower-end basic e-reader without a light that starts at $79, which offers twice as much storage as Amazon's previous entry-level Kindle. Not just that, though, but two new updates to the Kindle Fire tablet line, a new 6-inch Fire, which starts at $99, comes in five colors, and a 7-inch version of the Fire, which starts at $139. Amazon also released a new high-end tablet, the Kindle Fire HDX 8.9, which starts at $379. All are available for pre-order, and the company says the devices should be available to consumers sometime in October. In other Amazon news, the company has revealed the fourth version of its smartphone and tablet platform, Fire OS 4, built on top of Android 4.4 KitKat with deeper cloud integration, an updated user interface, and profiles for multiple accounts, including individualized preferences for email and social and other settings. A few features include something called Smart Suspend that sets up a device-specific profile over time to proactively turn off wireless functionality and save battery life, advanced streaming and prediction, which is otherwise known as ASAP, which predicts which movies and TV content you might want to watch next, that's by caching them in the background, and free cloud-based photo storage. Fire OS 4 now gives users free and unlimited photo storage in Amazon's cloud. Photos are uploaded wirelessly. Fire OS 4 is not yet available on Amazon's Fire phone, though, but the company says it will be early next year. Probably want to sell a few more first. Oracle announced today, that after the stock markets closed, that its longtime CEO, Larry Ellison, is stepping down. So who is replacing him? Former HP CEO Mark Hurd will take over the job in partnership with Safra Katz. Now, Katz will manage finance and manufacturing. Hurd will handle the sales side of things, so they're going to split duties. Ellison isn't leaving the company, though. He's taking on the titles of executive chairman of the board and chief technical officer, CTO. And after hours trading, Oracle took a about a 2.5% dip. The company is currently worth around $180 billion and had more than $11 billion in revenue in its most recent quarter. Well, Mary Jo Foley's sources are pretty solid. Two days ago, we passed along her report that layoffs were coming to Microsoft this week. And a Microsoft spokesperson has confirmed that 2,100 jobs are indeed being cut, noting that 747 of those laid off will be in Washington State, where Microsoft is headquartered. The remaining cuts will be at other Microsoft locations worldwide. With 13,000 cut in the first round of layoffs that happened back in July... Another 2,100 today. Microsoft is still planning to eliminate another 2,900 jobs by July of next year. One of the casualties of the latest round of job cuts at Microsoft is the Microsoft Research Silicon Valley Lab. Researcher Derek Murray tweeted today, quote, today they announced that the lab in Silicon Valley will be closing effective Friday. Microsoft Research is located in Mountain View, California. It was founded back in 2001 and currently employs about 50 people. That's a according to a company spokesperson who also noted that an undisclosed number of those researchers will be offered jobs at other Microsoft research labs. Well, this one is kind of interesting. A few weeks after TwitPic announced that it was shutting down its service due to a trademark conflict with Twitter, today the official Twitter account for TwitPic tweeted that the company isn't being shut down anymore. They're being acquired. Although the tweet didn't say by which company, only that, quote, we will post more details as we can disclose them. Hmm. 
Samsung has announced that the Galaxy Note 4 will launch in the U.S. on October 17th, and pre-orders start tomorrow, September 19th. AT&T has separately announced that it will start shipping pre-orders on October 14th, although it isn't specifying a date for retail availability, widespread anyway. The Note 4 is priced at $299.99 on contract, $299, of course, unsubsidized and contract-free for $825.99. Cool price. T-Mobile starts its pre-orders on September 24th with availability on October 17th as well. A lot of dates, a lot of dates. Coming up, Alibaba's IPO is set for tomorrow. But what exactly can you buy on its site? Some weird stuff, it turns out. And up next, I will chat with journalist John Seff about Apple's privacy statement and how the company is protecting consumers' data from search warrants. But first, drop what you're eating because it's not good for you and you know better. Take a good look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you need something like Nature Box. Nature Box is natural, delicious snacks. And in fact, we're going to tell you a little more about it and tell you how to get free snacks with a sampler box featuring five of their most popular snacks. Have you tried Nature Box? They have hundreds of delicious snacks, hundreds of them. And you don't have to feel bad about snacking because snacking is fun. We all need a little energy. We get hungry, but you don't want to be eating artificial ingredients. You don't want to be taking in trans fats. You definitely don't want to be eating a bunch of high fructose corn syrup. That's that is not good for you. This is where Nature Box really shines. You find snacks that are, they're delicious. They're good for you. They're low in sugar. Gluten-free is an option. So in the afternoon when you're hungry, you go for the roasted Peruvian corn kettles or the ancient grains granola or lemon pucker pistachios. There's a, there's a type of Nature Box for you. You can start your free trial and you can get that sampler box by going to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter. And we thank Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight and also giving out those sampler boxes to the rest of you. All right, joining us now is John Seff, johnseff.com, former executive editor over at Macworld. Hey, John. How you doing? And welcome to your first appearance on TN2. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, all right. So after this uh, celebrity photo issue that 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 happened with iCloud, this was you know, the week previous to the new iPhone launch, and a lot of people were saying, ooh, this is really bad timing. Well, the launch went as planned, and Apple even talked to financials. They talked about Apple Pay and, and, and all of that stuff. Well, Tim Cook has now come out and addressed um, pretty directly some privacy issues in a letter to customers. So what exactly is Apple saying at this point? Well, Apple's trying to point out that uh, unlike a lot of other companies that they don't name, but you can guess who some of them might be, Apple wants to think of its customers as customers, not as the product that, that, that they're selling. They sell you products, you're their customer, and they want to protect your privacy and protect your data. And so Tim Cook wrote a, a letter and they actually published a whole new site, apple.com slash privacy, that goes into detail about everything Apple's doing. And a lot of this is tied into iOS 8 and the new devices, the new phones. Do you think, by the way, I, I know I said johnseff.com because I am not bright, johnseff.net, uh, and I'll get that right the second time. Um, do you think that the timing of this is is very specific? Do you think that, do you think that, Probably Apple had had this ready to go um, and decided that they'd let uh, they'd let the iPhone event happen. They'd let all the pre-orders happen. They'd be able to talk about how many iPhones they had sold, and then we'll get to the privacy part of stuff once the once the the uh, the, the, the 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 sort of the the press dies down. Well, you know the the, the keynote was chock full of stuff. Um, there was a lot to talk about, and Apple's not going to address the celeb gate or whatever you want to call it. They're not going to address that directly. They they did a statement, but that was pretty much it. And this privacy site was obviously in the works for a little while. And it's not like you know they just decided after the keynote, hey, we better we better whip this thing up. I think they've been planning this for a while. And part of iOS eight is this deep uh, security and privacy stuff that's built in and. Uh, Apple Pay is a very important part of that, and the uh, you know Touch ID and using your um, using a passcode. Um, but then they they just built iOS eight so that once you have a passcode, iOS eight encrypts things in such a way that 
they're not like they were before and they're not as easily accessible. So I think Apple just wanted to really get the message out and just kind of wait until that initial weekend died down with all the sales. And especially because people are going to start getting their phones tomorrow, mine should be coming in the mail, and uh, very excitedly unwrapping them and setting them up. <laughs> and this is a good time to point out that, hey, guess what? It's secure. And also, even if you're not getting a new phone, if you're upgrading to iOS 8, which millions and millions of people can do with their older devices, you're still getting these privacy and security enhancements. Yeah, in fact, Apple makes a big deal about um, not wanting to give over any information uh, that, that might be uh, requested by the government. Um, and Tim Cook has said, well, the best way to do that is just to not have the information when they ask for it. So I know you've touched on this a little bit, but Apple has re-engineered some of the security on their devices so that that basically the company doesn't actually retain the sort of information that might be interested to the NSA or, you, you, you know, the, the, the sort of people who want this sort of information. Do you think that Apple has figured something out that other companies haven't, or is this pretty standard? Well, I wouldn't say it's pretty standard. What Apple did is they just sort of came up with a technical solution to the problem of privacy and requests from the government for data. In the past, if the government had a device and they wanted Apple to unlock the data on it so they could see it, Apple would, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, they would look to see if that was warranted. And if so, they could, in some cases, they could do that. Now, if you're running iOS 8 and you have a passcode, then Apple can't even do that because when you install, uh, when you put in a, a passcode, the way iOS 8 works is that it encrypts stuff in a different way now and Apple can't get to that. If they have your passcode, they could. And, you know, it's still only a four digit passcode. So in some ways it's not the most secure, but it is definitely a way of Apple saying, you know, hey, as long as you do what, we're setting up as the, the best way to protect your security and privacy. We don't have access to it. We can't unlock it even if we want it to. Now, as far as Apple's transparency reports that can obviously report uh, how many requests that they've been received, there's been talk about the removal of something called a warrant canary. What is that? Well, so sort of like, you know, the expression canary in a coal mine, which uh, as long as the canary is there and breathing, then the people in the mine know everything's okay. If the canary drops dead, then they know, hey, there's a problem here. So that's kind of what the same thing is with these. Um, this, it's the same idea. So in a transparency report, Apple or some other company, they can't necessarily say whether the NSA has asked for certain types of information. In this case, it's a Section 215 of the, of the Patriot Act. And that basically says that uh, the government can demand a company turn over business records in secret and can't talk about it. So what Apple did and other companies have done is they put a, a phrase in their in their report that basically said, we have not received uh, any orders under this section. And that's a sort that's sort of a way of saying, you know, if this changes, then you'll know something's wrong. So that was uh, a year ago. And then the last two reports, that phrase has been missing. So that's a way of tipping off and saying, hey, guess what? The canary is dead. Um, there, you know, we, we've had a request. We can't talk about it. We can't tell anything about it. We can't say what happened, how many, but we can say that something has happened. Canary is dead. John Seff writes at johnseff.net. That's J-O-N-S-E-F-F.net. -F and he's also the former executive editor at Macworld. Thanks for joining us today, John. And before you go, which iPhone are you getting in the mail tomorrow? I'm getting a 64 gigabyte iPhone 6. The Ooh. 6 Plus is just too darn big. Too big. Yeah, see, and I got the 6 Plus and I just feel worse than ever. All right, I'll, I'll get over it. Thanks so I'm much sure for joining. I'm sure it'll be perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll just, I'll just figure, my hands will get strong. It'll be great. Use two hands. <laughs> yeah, or I'll use two hands. Who needs a one-handed phone anyway? Nobody. Thanks so much for joining us, John. To be here. All right. Finally, we mentioned Alibaba will start trading on the New York Stock Exchange tomorrow, September 19th, and possibly the biggest IPO in history. But for those who might be in the United States that are sort of unfamiliar with what you might be able to get at Alibaba.com, 
Well, the company's English site is Alibaba.com. It features sales between importers and exporters in more than 240 countries. And Business Insider found a few of the weirder items on offer, such as a barf bib, which is better than a barf bag, of course, because you wear it, or a Buddha-shaped pair, only $12 a set, you guys. How about a $30,000 worm train? Okay. There's an inflatable castle. Uh, that is scary. And a fat freezing machine because, you know, the holidays are coming and we all want to look great. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's Alibaba.com. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. There's actually some really normal stuff on it too, but why not show the weird stuff? You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you back here same time, same place tomorrow with Jason Howell as host. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.